again guys and welcome back to another Big Owls Big Weapon video here on YouTube. Um, it's been a while since I've been fi since I filmed the video but this video is going to be focusing on this sword that you see here and that is the Conan the Barbarian Atlantean sword so the sword that he finds in the uh, in the tomb of the Atlantean giants about sort of half an hour into the film okay um, it's a beast of a blade and I have done a review on it before so if you want to go see the details um, and the nitty gritty of the blade itself, how it's forged, so on and so forth, and please watch my original video on that. But this video is a follow up on that, on my interpretation of how to fight with such a blade, because this is a very, very unusual blade um, compared to the sort of swords that you would find in a medieval um, historical period. Um, it is a fantasy blade, so it doesn't have to be an exact replica. Um, but typically, you know, the best fantasy blades are those which are heavily based in um, historical fact. And it's got some elements to it, but at the same time, this would never have been used in medieval times because it's such a hard blade to fight with. However, as I say, this video is about how I would fight with it if I had to, if I was suddenly teleported back in time, you know, a thousand years back or 800 years back and... I, uh, and I had to defend myself with this weapon against the weapons that you would typically find within um, the Middle Ages, um, which would be in Europe, typically the long sword, uh, mace, um, the odd axe here and there if you go back to Viking periods and stuff. So um, that's what I'm going to be discussing. Okay. Um, now this sword itself, just to give you some of the facts, is the blade is about 20 inches long. That's the sharp part of the blade and it's about... Uh, 36 inches long I think overall so it's a little on the short side for what it would be classified as I suppose as a long sword yeah, I suppose you would classify this as a long sword simply because you would fight with it or it looked like you would fight with it in a typical long sword fashion so you know you know your typical swings you know <laughs> I don't know. It's very hard, as you can see, to manipulate this blade. And part of the reasons why it's why I would hesitate to call it a long sword, even though it looks very similar to a long sword, um, is one, it's a little on the short side, but two, it's on the very heavy side. And that's the most important fact to point out about this blade: is it weighs a massive eight pounds. Now that might not sound heavy, you know. And you can see me, you know, I can, you know, I can hold it one-handed. To some degree, I can strike one-handed, but you can see how slow my strikes are. The weight of this blade is two to three times the weight of the typical longsword, and it's shorter than the typical longsword as well. So it hasn't got as much reach, and it's not as elegant a blade as the longsword is or, or used to be. Um, because this weighs a massive eight pounds. So a typical long sword would weigh between two and a half pounds and four pounds. So this is twice the weight of the biggest long sword you would, you would typically see in a historical period. Um, so that makes it a very heavy blade. Now that is, and most people would regard that as a major, major disadvantage because it doesn't allow you to manipulate the blade in an effective manner. Now, of course, you've seen Arnold Schwarzenegger in the original 1987 movie of Conan the Barbarian. And, you know, he is swinging it, you know, to some degree with precision and elegance. But he's an incredibly powerful and strong man. At least he was when he was, you know, in his 30s when he, and, and that when he made the film. Um, and this is an exact replica of um, uh, the blade that was used in that film. Um, Apart from the fact that this is made out of 105 uh, 52 HRC functional hard, high carbon steel, whereas his was stainless steel. But otherwise, the weight, the length, everything about it is, is basically identical. All dimensions are identical. So if you are strong enough, you can wield it in the way that Arnold Schwarzenegger wields it in the movie. Um, and that's a great reference point. Go watch that movie if you're, you're strong enough or you simply practice enough with it, you know, so you can do all the swings and all that. Then, then of course you can fight as if it's a, 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 a sword, so to speak, almost like it's not an official sword of the past, but what most people would describe as a bastard sword, which is just a long sword anyway, but a one and a half handed sword essentially. Um, in which case, that's essentially what it is. Um, but my um, interpretation of how to fight with this, and what I would put, put forward now and discuss to some degree, I'm not saying I'm an expert on it or anything like that, of course I'm not, um, but 
you know, when I do it, it's going to look a little rusty and stuff because it is awkward and it's not like I practice with this. This is more of a display piece to me, even though it is made out of functional steel and could be used, um, uh, you know, within a uh, recreation setting. But um, despite that, uh, my interpretation of the best ways to get the most out of this blade is to look at its weaknesses and turn them upside down. So its weakness, or its two main weaknesses, are, is its weight and its length. That is, if you were to use it as a sword. If you want a, you want a sword long enough to be able to put a big distance between you and your enemy, okay? Um, the longer the sword, to a point, the better. Now, if it gets too long, it becomes ungainly. It becomes closer to a great sword, which is not really a sword. It's kind of more like a pulse. I, I don't know, it's, it's sort of its own kind of classification of weapon, but it becomes harder to use then, especially up close and personal. Um, uh, but to a point, you still want a good amount of length, because then you can keep your enemy further away. Basically, the longer your weapon, uh, the harder it is for your enemy to hurt you, because you can keep them further away from you. Now, obviously, if they get within close range, you've potentially got a bit of a problem with a longer weapon, but... But generally speaking, the longer weapon is the easier weapon to use. The other thing about the weight um, is, is that swords don't do their damage as such when they just hack into you, almost like you would use an axe or a mace. Um, they don't really hack into you, they do to a point, but their damage comes from the draw cut. So as you hack in, as you draw your blade back towards you, the uh, sharp cutting edge of the sword cuts deep into the flesh okay and that's where the biggest damage comes from from a sword now you can still do that as a to some degree with this weapon as i've just kind of you know displayed to some degree um but uh because of its weight it's not as elegant as i say as a long sword or as a rapier for example if you were to go into sort of high medieval sort of renaissance period um, you, 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 you know, it, it's nowhere near as manoeuvrable as those weapons because those weapons they can be moved very, very quickly to get to a, a killing, you know, a part of the armour that's weak, and then sh can deal with the, 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 the cutting blow. Or they can use the point of the sword if you're going up against armour, and you can find the weak spot of the armour and thrust into it um, with a degree of accuracy. The heavier the weapon, the longer the weapon, essentially it makes it a little bit harder to do that accurately. But as I say, what we're going to do is we're going to take those weaknesses of weight and uh, length, we're going to take them away and turn them upside down on their head and say, don't treat this like a sword. Treat it more like a hybridization between a sword and a mace, and to some degree an axe as well. Now at range, I would say, build it like an axe, like a Dane axe be more precise. Now you can't do it to to full extent because the haft on a great uh, on a Dane axe is very long. My hand would be able to come up here um, uh, very easily on a Dane axe because I have two Dane axes. I have one that I bought which is five and a half foot long. Um, that's the haft itself. Um, it's the best part of six foot uh, long. Uh, and I've got another one which is just a tidbit under four foot long which I made myself. Um, which is a very, very dangerous weapon because it's a, still a long weapon, but it's very manoeuvrable, very easy to, to manipulate and, and uh, attack from all kinds of angles. Very good for one-on-one -on -one combat, ultimately. Whereas the very long Dane Axe, which is as long as Dane Axe has got, it would be very useful on a battlefield setting if um, you were supported with shield and sword kind of, or sh shield and spear guys. Um, because you could hide behind a shield wall and just swing your axe over the top, kind of thing. But that's a whole different thing, a whole different discussion. In um, regards to using this, I would still say you can, to some degree, use it like an axe because the weight is so, you know, I mean, it's actually fairly well balanced. It is around the hilt, but it's so heavy regardless um, that the, the, the impact of the force, along with a cutting edge, is me meaning means that you're going to be able to cleave through opponents that are unarmoured or very lightly armoured, i.e. not chainmail and not full plate. This will do devastating damage and it would do some high impact damage even against chainmail. It won't cut through the chainmail because you can't cut through metal with metal. 
um, but it would um, have a, such a large impact force you could break like the clavicle or the arm or anything you know whichever bone you hit would, would possibly shatter um, when you hit someone with such a heavy weighted blade um, and to do that you know you would do your typical sort of great axe movement okay you did the Dane axe so if you missed say they missed you step forward again and you'll do that okay so you swing it one one so you just keep swinging it around and that blade it doesn't get as tiring you can keep building the blade you know in such a manner and it's not as tiring as it would be if you were going <coughs> because you're not trying to stop the momentum of the blade you're only really using energy right at the beginning to get the swing of the weapon up now don't get me wrong I know you guys will be on here saying that's major telegraphing people know you're coming but you could throw some kind of feint it's still manipulate uh, you, uh, you can still manipulate it to a point or if you're going like that you could still bang come down and hit them with the pommel in a similar way that you would do with a, an axe shaft hit him with the end of the haft. Not as good for that because it's not as long. Um, so you have to really step in to hit them. So you, you, they think you're about to, to do that. But instead when you're there, you just go bang and you hit them on the head with a very heavy pommel. Um, that's how you would do it if you were fighting at range. And the other way, obviously to keep the point, it's still a pointed sword. You can still thrust, but it would be that's the most ineffective way to use this blade, in my opinion, because the point isn't pointy. It's sharp, but it's not pointy. It's not going to get through the gaps of armour. It really isn't. So you really need to make use of the hacking or the cleaving element of this blade, which is, of course, the edge of the blade. And you can still perform jaw cuts as well, which is nice, OK? Um, but... You know, um, you're just going to have to use a lot more energy to do so. However, with this blade excels, regards its weight and its shorter stature, is if you get on, say, say you're coming in and they've got a long sword. One of the advantages of having a heavy blade is a sort of double element to it. First of all, makes parrying a lot easier. Okay? There's a reason why swords can't be super, 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 super light. They have to have some weight to them. Even a rapier still weighs roughly two, two and a half pounds. Um, and that's seen as a sort of very elegant fencing blade. The um, reason it has weight to it is so they can still parry a, you know, a overhead blow or anything along those lines. Um, and the weight of the blade really helps with blocking an attack and mostly deflecting it. So, so say an attack coming from here, you hit that, slide it away, and then come in with a big hack like that. This is where the blade would come in very much in handy. Its weight makes you very good at defending yourself. And you don't even have to block with the edge. You could hold it to some point if you were really in trouble, like that. You know, and then you push them away, and then again strike. I wouldn't recommend doing it that way because your hands are very close to the attack but say they come in, in, in with an axe a really heavy blade you could go like that and kind of try and get rid of the axe and come in half swording straight into the gut of the opponent again very useful way to build this blade um, but as I say the weight not only makes it very much easier to parry it's slower to parry but as long as you get in the way it's very good at parrying and deflecting weapons off you but it's also itself very hard to intercept. Now the opponent might see a blow coming, <laughs> but how are they going to stop it when it weighs an absolute ton? Now it's not going to hit with the same impact force, in my opinion, as a Dane axe, because although a Dane axe would be potentially a bit lighter than that, it could be a bit heavier, but you know, it depends on the, on the head of the axe. Um, but it would typically be a lot lighter than this. Well, not a lot lighter, a bit lighter, um, but it's got a longer half, so just pivoting motion the swing would do more damage than this sword from a Dane axe but still you can still move with some degree of speed from even a neutral position like this which you would never be in you would always have it kind of like that and then just bang it goes straight in but it's 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 gonna hit hard basically and putting a much smaller blade than this in the way of it might not be enough to stop the blade and it could still come through 
and hit them even though they've tried to parry. So this is weapon is very hard, much harder to defend against than you would initially anticipate despite its slower movements, but also is very good at defending because of its weight. The other advantage of its weight uh, is that it hits hard. When you hit your opponent, it's going to go deep, okay? As I say, an unarmoured opponent, this would be a great weapon against, essentially, providing you could defend yourself against a possibly faster weapon. As long as you can do that and you just go whack like that, you're going to cut off an arm, you know, you're going to do serious, serious damage. You're going to dismember very, very easily with a blade like this. But the other advantage is, if you, even if you're going up against an armoured opponent in full plate armour, um, you no sword can cut through full plate armour. They have to find the gaps between the plates. That's how they're effective. In fact, most of the time, long swords, as a result, weren't the primary, <laughs> the primary weapon that knights would use on the battlefield because they were a backup weapon. Um, instead, they would use something more like a mace or a morning star or, or a hammer, you know, a warhammer, uh, something along these lines. And, of course, if they mounted a lance. But um, against armour, swords particularly aren't that great to be honest but the way that they are good is they can be go into say like the armpit which were typically a weaker area of the armour a bit more exposed where they couldn't get armour or around the joints where there still has to be articulation so the protection is much lesser you would kind of aim for those points or you could if you could get the blade into it it's a much better way of trying to get your opponent down but this weapon doesn't work like that if you don't see it as a sword but you see it as a mace, or a maul, because a maul is essentially a two-handed mace, and you would wield this two-handed. Um, it'd be a very short maul, but, uh, you know, nonetheless. Um, if you see it as a bludgeoning weapon, even but with an edge, then you're going to get much more effectiveness out of it, because if you simply think, well, I don't have to aim for the weak spots, so the mobility and the elegance of the blade is no longer a problem. I don't have to make precise attacks against certain parts of the armour. I can swing it, bang, and no matter where it hits on that guy, it's going to do damage. And if I can hit him, hit him on the head, it's going to ring like a bell, and I'm probably going to knock him out. Because, um, you know, it's going to do so much damage um, on impact. Now... That's the way that you use a mace, is obviously to try and disable your opponent by hitting them over the head, typically, or by breaking part one of their bones. One of the bones you would typically aim for, of course, being the collarbone, or the clavicle, okay? But again, even if you were to strike the arm, you would break the arm, and they can't use that to build a weapon anymore. So it's quite an effective weapon in that sense. And so if you were to use it like a mace, and use the advantages of the fact that it's shorter than the typical longsword, get inside a long sword so you're inside your opponent's here you've deflected the blade out of the way you've stepped in and then bang you're hitting them with your weapon or even just a pommel i mean that's how they're going to use it they're going to pommel it or they're going to uh, murder murder uh, i think it's a murder murder stroke i think it's called they're going to half sword it essentially but you can half sword it as well and that's one of the great things as i say it's hybridization essentially between a mace so you're hitting them very powerfully but if you get super close you can really half sword this weapon very well because this part is a bit like like you see on a great sword it's blunted and so you can half sword this not that you need to because the steel isn't going to bend one of the reasons that knights used to half sword their long swords they would grab the sword there so the sword wouldn't bend good steel bends this will bend to a point, but, and then go back into place. But because it's so thick, it's not really going to bend. So it actually does make a very good stabbing weapon, despite its quite fat point. Because um, you can still go in and bang, uh, try and pierce the full plate to, to a point, or certainly go for a weak spot and just try and deliver a high pressure attack. But the half striking makes it just more easy to, to manipulate quicker makes it a quite quick weapon, quite a nimble weapon. You can come up like that. Um, and so you're kind of using it more like an axe at that point, with like say, a two-handed stroke. You would just swap your hands around really. Um, so you can really come in, come up on different angles, you know. That's the way I would use it in theory. So at a distance, I would treat it like an axe or a, 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 or a maul coming over with big strokes 
as they get closer, I've got a defense, okay, um, with a heavy blade, and I'm not caring where I hit. That's a good thing about this blade, is you can swing and not be very precise or very elegant with your attacks. If you're an untrained swordsman, um, you're not going to get to the weak parts of the armor anyway. It takes decades of practice to be able to, one, get the knight to expose his weaknesses, because that knight's going to know where his weaknesses are, but to kind of put him in a position where he suddenly exposes his weakness and get to it before he can reset his defense. But also on top of that, it's hard to accurately place a blade in a very small area from a distance. It's easier to do it up close, and that's, as I say, like a, like a half-sorting technique. Um, but this weapon does not care. You can strike, and if you're an inexperienced, unskilled swordsman, much like myself, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can still come in and do damage, even one-handed if you wanted, if you were strong enough. And so that's really how I would use it, as a maul and an axe um, at range. And as I get closer, I would use this part to kind of go like that, or you know, almost quarterstaff techniques almost. <laughs> you know, just try and hit them as much as possible. Um, and of course, still use my body as well. So I'd hit them, push them, punch them, because I can hold that very easily from there, and it's actually quite light from this handhold. Um, and it's just, as a result, a much better blade than you would think. Um, if I went back into medieval times, would I pick this as my weapon? Um, no, I'd probably use a, a, a standard longsword um, because that was tried and tested. And there was a reason why they used them instead of a big blade like this. Um, but certainly if I found myself teleported back into the past uh, and I had this blade, I certainly wouldn't be defenceless in any way whatsoever. Um, but a knight would still put me on my ass. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, I don't know what you think, if you've got any ideas on how you would wield a blade like this. It is a fantasy blade, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're, you know, um, how you would do it, especially if you're more average strength. Obviously, I'm a fairly big guy, so, you know, carrying a nice sword blade, I've done it the whole, throughout the whole video. It doesn't really bother me. I'm still not tired, you know. Um, but most people would struggle. I've given it to my girlfriend. She can't even lift it up with two hands hardly. She's like, ooh, like that. So... You tell me, anyway, how would you fight with it? Do you agree with what I said? Or you've got any other ideas to add to it? Or completely different ideas on how to wield uh, a weapon like this effectively? Nice one, guys. And I will see you soon. Peace out.